In this section of training, we'll examine the use of a picture deck. We'll provide some important background information on the purpose behind a picture deck. And watch a brief video demonstration of a visual and tactile drill. You need to have your picture deck ready. Preparation of your picture deck will involve pulling cards A through Z, shuffling them several times so that they are not in alphabetical order. I'd like to start off this section of training by talking about the importance of teaching letter names. Research tells us that as children enter school, their knowledge of letter names is a strong predictor of their future reading and spelling abilities. Why would that be true? Well, students who enter school with the ability to recognize and name letters already have a solid foundation to begin learning sound symbol correspondences. They are more prepared when a teacher begins instruction on the T sound, which is represented by the letter T for spelling, and that when we see the letter T in print, it will be pronounced T for blending sounds together in decoding words. Knowledge of letter names is also important for giving us a common language to talk about letters that have different forms. For instance, some capital forms do not match their lowercase peers. So, for students who in preschool may have been instructed in letter recognition using capital letters, it's important for them to know that the name of that letter is A, so that they're more prepared to see a second representation of that letter and associate it with the name of the letter A as well. Many letter names clue us into the sound that the letter produces. For example, by saying the name of the letter B, it supports our retrieval of the sound of that letter, B. Similarly, the letter T supports T and D supports D. Wouldn't it be nice if every letter in the alphabet played fairly? Well, unfortunately, there are a few that do not. For example, the letter W. By saying that name, we won't easily come up with a w sound. And unfortunately, when we say the name of the letter Y, we may be inclined to say the w sound. So, despite the handful of challenges that might come with a few letters, it is far more advantageous to make sure that students know their letter names as a supportive tool for retrieving the appropriate letter sound. While we've been talking about letter name knowledge being important, Letter sound knowledge is also essential, and we shouldn't be in a position where we're weighing which one to teach. Both are critical, and both can be taught efficiently. In many core programs, the approach is taken to teach letter names first, and once students have reached a level of automaticity, then letter sound knowledge is the emphasis of instruction. One of the things that research tells us is that they can occur concurrently. In fact, teaching both the name and the sound of the letter simultaneously is an effective practice and is encouraged. That's one of the strategies behind the picture deck that we will be exploring in just a moment. If you're interested in the research behind the value of teaching letter name and letter sound knowledge simultaneously, the resources at the bottom of your screen, which can also be found in your manual, may be of interest to you. Since research supports the instruction of letter names and letter sounds simultaneously, we have taken that approach as we developed our OG picture deck. On the picture deck, the keyword is illustrated. The importance of a keyword is that it allows students to use that keyword to support retrieval of the letter sound. When we use the picture deck, we are explicitly teaching the name of the letter using the illustrated keyword to support memorization of that keyword, and then using the keyword again to support students in extracting or connecting the appropriate letter sound. If you are using our OG lesson plans on our website, you'll find that in the kindergarten lessons, the picture deck is used for about the first half of the year. Each letter is introduced explicitly one day at a time, meaning that the first 26 days of school are designated for introduction of the alphabet. Remember, they are not just learning letter names during these 26 days, but are learning a keyword, sound, and handwriting formation. While letters are introduced one day at a time, they don't disappear. Instead, they're graduated into the visual drill, where students see them and practice them to automaticity until about the end of the first semester.
In our first grade lesson plans, the picture deck is used for a shorter period of time. It is introduced at the beginning of the year, and the emphasis is placed on learning the keywords as a tool for retrieving appropriate letter sounds. Because the first grade lessons provide different pacing opportunities, those students following level one pacing, which is above grade level, will walk away from the picture deck much earlier in the year than the students who are using a more supportive pacing, where explicit instruction of two to three letters at a time continues for the first quarter. The purpose of the picture deck visual drill is to develop automaticity and accuracy of letter names, keywords, and sounds. The cards that are used for this drill have already been explicitly taught. When we are delivering a visual drill, it's important that all students are able to see the cards. We suggest having students sit on the floor close to the teacher in a meeting area. Having teachers sit in a chair so they are slightly elevated above the students will allow students to see the cards more clearly. We encourage teachers to anchor their cards in one spot, so students are not having to keep track of moving cards. The order that we prompt students for information is intentional. First, the teacher points to the letter and prompts students to say the letter name. Then he or she points to the keyword picture, prompting students to pronounce the keyword. And then finally, the teacher points back up to the letter, prompting students to say the sound. Looking at the two examples on your screen, in a visual drill, the teacher would prompt and the students would respond by saying A, Apple, A, or J, Jam, J. That will be demonstrated in just a moment. On the screen, we have some letters that we need to provide more information on. First, when the B and D cards come up in the drill, we have students hold up their B checkers to quickly eyeball the letters to determine which letter it is before we start tapping the cards. We don't ask students to tell us if it is a B or not a B at this time. We do, however, add three B checker cards to the beginning of this drill for students to practice that. Next, we have the QU card. When we are explicitly teaching this card, we also teach them this rule. Q is always followed by U. When this card comes up in the drill, the students will say QU, Queen, Qu, and then the teacher prompts the students to say the rule. Finally, we have the vowel cards. When using the picture deck, we are only teaching students the short sound for the vowels. With younger children, we refer to the short sound as just the sound. So to help students retrieve the sound of the vowels, we have hand motions to go with them, which we will demonstrate in just a minute. When utilizing a picture deck in an OG lesson, there is often an additional drill added called a tactile drill. A tactile drill provides additional multi-sensory support. Not only is this helpful to support that automaticity and retrieval, but it's also helpful for providing letter formation practice. When delivering a tactile drill, the students are still responding with the letter name, keyword, and sound. But in addition, students are using their writing hand or their skywriting hand to form the letter with gross motor formation in the sky while saying the components of the card. In this drill, students will not use their B checker for B and D cards, nor would they use hand motions for the vowel cards or give the QU rule. That procedure will be demonstrated as well in a brief video. The skywriting procedure refers to a specific gross motor activity that is an important element of multisensory learning. When we want students to skywrite, we need to make sure that they're using their writing hand, the one that they would normally use if they were writing on paper. We also want this to be a gross motor activity. To do this, we want students to extend their arms straight and strong, and their fingers should be pointing toward the card, almost as if they're tracing right over the top of the card as they're forming the letter. The job of a teacher is to monitor letter formation and support the correct formation and directionality. If the teacher chooses to do this through modeling, the teacher will need to be mindful about how this appears from a student's perspective. If you're facing the students, 
you will either need to form your letters backwards to yourself so that they are in the right order and direction for your students, or you may opt to turn your body so that you and the students are facing the same direction and form your letters that way. Again, this is something to think of if you choose to take the role on of modeling formation. If you don't feel that modeling formation is necessary, your role could just shift to pointing and prompting the card and not actually forming letters yourself. All right, before we demonstrate the visual drill, I'm going to talk about a few of our cards. The first are the B checker cards. When you hold up the B checker card, students are going to take their B checker, they're going to eyeball that letter, and they're going to either say B or not a B. Then we have our vowel cards. With the vowel cards, we have hand motions for the short vowels. So this, for the letter A, it would be A, apple, A, like you're picking up an apple and you're getting ready to take a bite and you say A, A, apple, A. E, edge, E, like you're rubbing against the edge of a table. I, itch, I, like you're itching your nose. O, ox, A. Ah like you are opening your mouth and saying ah, uh, and you're tracing around your mouth like an O. U, up, uh, like you're pointing up in the air. Then we have our BD checker, or I mean our BD cards. With the BD cards, I generally like to have students kind of, when they get to these cards, I want them to hold up their B checker just really quickly, just to make sure that they know that it's either a B or a D. And then I point and they say B boy, B. D, dog, D. And the last card I want to talk about is the Q-U. With Q-U, you want to make sure that you're saying both of those letters, Q-U, Queen, Qua. And we have a rule with that. And the rule is when you prompt your students, they're going to say Q is always followed by U. All right, so those are our cards that I want to talk about. And now we are ready to demonstrate the visual drill. Are you ready, Erilyn? Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and get your B checker up. B or not a B? B. B or not a B? B. Not a B. Good. Let's try that again. B or not a B? Not a B. Awesome. B or not a B? B. Good job. Okay, you ready? Go ahead and say the letter name. A, apple, A. Ooh, nice hand motion. Ooh, you know what I forgot to do? I need to shuffle these cards up, don't I? Mm -hmm. We don't want them all the vowels all together. We want to mix it up just a little bit. Okay. V, van, mm. Nice. U, uh, y, u. Okay, my turn. U, up, uh. U, up, uh. Very nice. E, edge, e. Eh. I, itch, e. Eh. Very nice. Oh, B, B checker? Okay. B, boy, b. D, dog, d. Very good. Q, Q, U, queen, qua. And the rule? Q always follows the U. Good, you are so close. Q is always followed by U. Q is always followed by U. Very nice. F, fish, f. R, rat, r. M, man, m. Okay, try that again. M, man, m. Very nice. L, lamp, l. P, pig, p. O, ox, aw. Nice. W, wagon, w. N, nest, n. T, top, t. Jam, g, <laughs> j, jam, j. Very good. K, kite, k. Z, zebra, z. Perfect. F, F, I mean, H, hat, G, goat, G. X, box, C, cat, K. 
S snake Y yo 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 very nice good job that was the visual drill so now what we're going to do is the tactile drill so with the tactile drill, we need to remember to, that we're going to have straight, strong arms for sky riding. Can you show me your straight, strong arms? Okay, good. It's going to be the hand that you write with. Very nice. And I like the way that you're holding them and looking up, pointing to the cards, and you're looking up at the cards. And um, we're going to say exactly what we said in the visual drill. A, apple, a, we're not gonna make any hand motions with our vowels, we're not gonna say a rule. Um, no B checkers, we're just going to make the letter as we say all those different parts. Can we do it? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna write underneath it, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I could write like this, but then I have to try to write backwards, which I could do, but I think I'm gonna write like this today. Are you ready? A, a apple, then. Good, and let's go ahead and put our hand and we want to be able to move it. Can you get your hand moving? So actually, yeah, there you go. Perfect, let's try that again. A, a apple, a. a. V, v, van, v. Very good. U, a, u, um, y, a. A. Very good. E, edge, e. Good. So E, edge, edge. Eh. Good, let's try that again. E, edge, eh. I, itch, eh. B, boy, b. D, dog, d. Q, u. Queen, qua. F, fish, f. R, rat, r. M, man, m. Perfect. Lamp, l. Good. What's the letter name? L, lamp, l. Good. Okay. Let's go ahead and write it. L, lamp, l. P, pig, p. Awesome. O, ox, x. So, o, o, ox, o. Good. W, wagon, w. N, nest, n. T, 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 top, t. Nice. Jam, j. All right, let's start with the letter name. J, jam, j. Nice. You are doing a, such a super job. K, kite, k. Z, z zebra, z. H, hat, g. G, goat, g. X, box, C cat. So C cat. cat k. Good. Can you do that one more time? C cat. K. S snake. S. Y yo yo. Yeah. Good job. Okay, shake out your hands. You did such a nice job. On the screen is the script for introducing a new card in a picture deck. The teacher information and directions are on the left and the student information is on the right. When introducing a new letter, we're introducing the name of the letter, then the keyword, and finally the sound. Remember the keyword in a picture deck is a critical component to support students in retrieving the sound. So if I were to introduce the new card on the screen in front of you, I would say, I have a new letter to teach you today. The name of the letter is D. Students repeat. The keyword is dog. They repeat. The sound that the letter D makes is D. And students repeat. When we skywrite this letter for practice, we would skywrite three times, saying D, dog, D. Then we would review. This concludes the visual and tactile components of the picture deck.